Hey everybody, David Ellison here. Thanks for tuning in to The Rock Shop. Today we're going to talk about live concert income. Uh, I get a lot of emails and people asking about how do artists and musicians get paid, and, and uh, while they do vary a little bit, some of the, the basic concepts are pretty much the same. Uh, if you're a new artist and just trying to get out and, and be recognized, chances are you're going to want to play everywhere and, and anywhere just to get recognized. And as you start to graduate up the uh, up the ladder a little bit, you may be able to play for what's called a door deal, which is basically take any of the proceeds of paying customers that come through the door to, at a club or a bar. And eventually you want to get yourself to a position where you're actually getting some guaranteed income, where uh, a promoter, um, whether an independent or in-house, say it's at a club or a bar or House of Blues or something like that, will, will uh, be the one to basically hire you in to play for a guaranteed set amount of income. That's the best way to be able to calculate what your expenses are, to be able to calculate what ultimately is going to be your, your bottom line profit. Um, a lot of promoters start out actually as independents and uh, take their chances on bringing some, uh, you know, working with artists. Sometimes they lose some money to hopefully try to make a little money on a couple of big ones. Um, then eventually promoters like to try to buy their own buildings, which is what Live Nation has done uh, worldwide, quite honestly, uh, to try to own as much of it, uh, you know, with, with the actual venues as well as being able to uh, purchase uh, an entire tour to be able to buy and, and, and be able to run that whole tour throughout an entire um, region of, of the world. Um, and, and lots of times it's a little deceptive because ticket prices can change a lot too. Um, you know, you can go to a concert and and if you're, uh, you know, if you go to see an amphitheater, you can have everything from the ten dollar lawn seats to maybe a thirty dollar ticket to sit uh, down in the actual hard chairs. And of course, if you're right down at the front, the ticket prices can be, you know, seventy, eighty, hundred dollars to be down there, as well as even VIP packages. So, what I want to do, I'm going to put up on the uh, screen here. I'm going to put up. Uh, we're going to do some math today. Um, we're going to look at some live concert revenue, and uh, for these purposes, we're going to look at just a, a um, you know a, a moderately successful either independent or major label touring artist uh, playing a, a one thousand seat capacity venue. Um, we're going to look at the average ticket price. We're going to just call it twenty bucks. So for our purposes, the gross potential that could come in the door if it's a sellout is twenty thousand dollars. Now, the promoter's going to have expenses on here, so we're going to look, first of all, we've got security, maybe there's some production with sound and lights, catering, advertising, marketing, maybe they have to pay an opening group to, uh, to perform, so there's going to be some expenses, and for our purposes, we'll just calculate that at about $4,000. Uh, then there's going to be the guarantee to the artist, and um, we're going to call that $10,000, and the way we got to that calculation was the promoter and the band's booking agent have have uh, ascertained that this artist can for sure bring 500 people in the door at 20 bucks a head gives you ten thousand dollars so the total expenses are fourteen thousand you take that off of 20 leaves you a net balance of six thousand dollars now the six thousand dollars is left over is technically the promoter's uh, potential profit uh, usually artists that tour at this level will probably do some sort of a back-end split. Um, maybe it's 50-50 where the promoter takes half of that, the band takes half. Uh, the more successful and established the artist is, they may be able to split it 70-30 or even 80-20 in the band's favor. So that's just a, gen uh, yeah, a pretty general breakdown about how um, booking agents and promoters negotiate um, you know, the, the, uh, the fee to an artist to, to do a tour. Now, let's we're going to put up another sheet here. Um, that uh, breaks down the income and then the cost of an artist to tour because as we've talked about here in the rock shop being an artist and a musician these days it's always been very entrepreneurial but as an artist or a, a touring musician you essentially have to become your your own business and and like any business you take the risk you stand to make all the reward but you are also uh, the last one to be paid <laughs> so uh, all expenses have to come out first so Let's take the same scenario where uh, the income, we have a weekly gross income, say that artist that's making $10,000 per night guaranteed, uh, is out on the road and, and is playing five shows a week. So that puts our weekly income at $50,000. Now, management and agent commissions right off the top of that, these are all based on the gross income that comes in. So 
A booking agent, general booking agent commissions are 10%, and again, that's off $50,000, so $5,000 comes right off the top. Uh, band's manager at 15%, again, off of $50,000 is $7,500. The business management, uh, which is also the accountant, most of those deals usually are, are uh, uh, 5% off the gross, so again, $2,500. So right off the top, before anybody gets paid anything, the managers, managers and the agents are taking 15000 bucks right off the top. Um, now let's get into the actual weekly touring expenses, and these are very generic, and quite honestly, these are even a little conservative. Um, a van at this level is probably not going to be in a van and a trailer. They're probably going to be touring in a, in a bus, a tour bus, and probably not going to have trucks and things, so we're, let's assume they're pulling a trailer behind, like many of the shows you all might go to, you see these types of scenarios. So bus and a trailer, conservatively, five grand a week. Uh, fuel, which can always fluctuate, again another five grand a week. Uh, crew, depending on if you have uh, tour manager, sound man, maybe a guitar tech, drum tech, a couple of people out there working for you, let's call that three grand. Uh, some hotel costs could be two thousand, and just various miscellaneous things. We'll kind of call a little float budget there of about two grand. So again, you're looking at total expenses conservatively of twelve grand, and that that could easily be more than that. So we're looking at total expenses and commissions of $27,000, which leaves approximately a weekly profit to the artist of about 23 grand. And um, now most uh, touring artists are going to, at some point, add their salaries in. They're gonna put the band members, even though you're the owner of the business, you're gonna put yourself on a salary, and that would also put it put that in there. So you, again, if a four-piece band, add another, you know, even conservatively thousand bucks a week, something like that, you could throw that that into your your weekly nut and, and uh, of expenses. Um, let's go down to the bottom of the sheet and we'll look at some, you know, most tours have some startup costs. There's rehearsals, uh, usually flights to bring people in, uh, usually some equipment purchases to kick off a tour, various miscellaneous things. So those can, you know, easily start up at $10,000 easily uh, to be going out on, on a tour and somewhere those are going to have to be absorbed. So um, when you look at this, you know, bringing in, you know, even $50,000 a week goes pretty quick. Uh, so you really have to run a pretty tight ship. And, and again, there's a lot of variables, fuel costs, economies, things like that. Um, but to keep a band out on the road, if you can get yourself to this level and you're, and you're able to play these kind of venues, you can sustain yourself and make a decent living. So um, you have to ask yourself, is this the best thing I can do to make a, my living? And if you're, you know, a, a passionate artist and musician, chances are this is what you're going to want to be doing. So, um, you know, being able to do this if you do it smart and you do it wisely. Uh, a lot of bands also form uh, an LLC or a corporation of sorts so that they can try to do some sort of even health care and insurance um, and, you know, even potentially workman's comp and things like that. You can, you can, you know, use, you can form a, a shell at a structure to uh, write off a lot of expenses as well. So for when it comes end of the year for tax time, uh, the owners of the business are have, have some some uh, you know, some tax shelters there as well. So anyway, um, a lot of different scenarios. Obviously, with that, these are just some some generalities. But uh, uh, if you're out there working, uh, trying to work your way up the ladder, um, these are some just basic concepts that uh, work for how deals are put together for. Uh, um, you know, structuring your business to, to try to become a, a profitable uh, touring and gigging artist and musician. So thanks for stopping in. You can get me on email, rockshop at davidellison.com. Thank you.